He was a weak and pathetic human who turns out to be the strongest cursed vampire hunter and marries a beautiful vampire. Hundreds of years ago, the vampires and the humans had an online beef and instead of having a boxing match, they ended up having a huge ass war in which the vampires were all but wiped out. Ever since then, vampires have been living in secret just like Logan Paul after the Japanese forest incident to make sure they are not killed like the others. No is one such dumb BTS looking ass vampire who thinks he is very cool because lesbians want to be with him. He is on board an airship to go to Paris as he wants to find the Book of Vanitas, a super important magical camisa for which can help the vampires. He suddenly spots a cutie named Amelia who seems to be sick, so he goes in to help her. After looking at his boy band face, she immediately gets wet and asks what the hell is he doing here. No tells her that he is going to Paris on this huge demonic looking airship, where he suspects the Book of Vanitas is, and this suddenly grabs her attention as if it was the new release of a Twilight film. Meanwhile, on top of the ugly ass ship is an ugly ass dude with hair longer than an average American's lifespan, standing and smiling creepily. Inside the ship, Amelia follows Noah up but suddenly collapses down. But before Noah could help her, she tells him to stay the hell away which breaks all the lights in the area. He suddenly notices Amelia's eyes turning red and her teeth becoming bigger which makes her realize that she is a vampire herself. Before he could do anything, the windows burst as the mysterious man jumps in to grab the girl, but finds out that No was able to save her. The man introduces himself as Van and tells No to drop the woman and leave as she doesn't like ugly ass incels like him. But No tells him that girls like nice guys and she will definitely choose him over Van. This angers Van and he immediately jumps forward with his blade, barely missing No as he moves back with Grace dodging each and every attack that Van threw at him. Suddenly Amelia starts feeling pain which distracts No, and Van uses this to his advantage, and tries to trip him over with his wire. No is not a bitch though, and throws her up in the air, before dodging back and then punching the dog shit out of Van as he flies off and falls to the ground like my self-respect every time I text my ex. Van gets up from the ground, and realizes that No is also a vampire, and a very strong one, while No starts running off with the girl into a forest, hoping to finally get some action. Suddenly the girl starts growing crazy as a black ghost in her mind kissed her on the face. This racist bitch starts crying, while No tries to go back to call a doctor. Before he could leave though, the crazy bitch latches onto his back and just when this virgin thought that he is going to get his cherry popped, the racist girl bites his neck and starts sucking on his blood like it's Caprison. No tries to run away, while Amelia starts going crazy as black tentacles erupt around her, and attack No before grabbing a bunch of people. Just when I thought the story was going to turn 18 plus with those tentacles, No comes in and ruins the fun by grabbing her and trying to push her back while the others run away. No realizes that he shouldn't have stuck his prick in crazy while she pushes him back once again. He was just about to get ice guyed by Amelia Kun, when suddenly lightning strikes and they both fall on their dumb asses. While Van appears between them like a gigachat, he tells No that this bitch be crazy and is possessed by spirits which only he can kill. Amelia starts growing more tentacles but our American brother shows why America is the best, and shoots them down. No asks Van whether he is a priest from the church and is going to kill her, but Van replies that he can't be a priest as he has no interest in little kids and claims that he is a doctor whose speciality is dealing with crazy bitches. He suddenly takes out his fancy little blue book which immediately gives Noah stiffy as he watches the black covers inside and realizes that this is the book of Vanitas. Van immediately uses his magical spell and gives the girl the biggest orgasm of her life, which satisfies the spirit inside her as it leaves her body. Noah is shocked to see his stamina and performance, while the girl like any other hoe chooses the dickhead over the nice guy. No watches like a cuck when suddenly some very non-American policemen come who don't shoot them immediately and order them to surrender. But Van tries to scare them off by claiming he will give them his D, but ends up tripping and falls off the airship. Surprisingly No jumps off the ship as well and fulfills his foot fetish by grabbing Van's leg as they both fall down while looking at the blue moon which is pretty romantic not gonna lie. But Van says no homo so it's fine. After they crash, No grabs Van out of the ground, and starts asking about how he has so much stamina to give the girl the big O, but Van claims that he is from Alabama and had a lot of practice back in his home. Van claims that he wants to save all the vampires and wants No to help him by being his bodyguard as Van himself is only a human who can die easily. No ends up accepting the term, and they both become a team after saying no homo once again. The next day they get arrested and put into a jail cell for breaking into the airship, while they both were sleeping. 
No tells Van that he is here, because his teacher told him to go to Paris, find the magic book of Vanitas, and figure out its true nature. Van tells him that his teacher must be a crack addict because he never told him what is he supposed to do once he found it, and No realizes that he is correct. Before he can think more though, the policeman comes and tells them that some wealthy politician has helped free them from the prison and asked them to meet him. Both of them exit the prison and immediately No is fascinated by a totally unrealistic-looking Paris. Van tells him to keep moving, but the creep keeps getting distracted and even tries to steal some kids. But Van catches him and takes him away. After a while they enter a fancy-looking hotel, and Van explains that after the war, the vampires were defeated but were allowed to live if they never attacked another human. Ever since then some vampires have been living among the humans and the queen has appointed a vampire politician to maintain these bombs. They enter the room of the politician and immediately two idiot vampires try to attack them, only stopping near Van's neck, telling him to knock before coming in. Van tells them to shut their bitch ass up, while the fat fucking bald politician tells them to stand down. The baldy asks whether Van is the human who has the book of Venitas, while No tries to play with a cat and gets bitch slapped. Van calmly walks and sits down on the sofa like a total chad, and tells the fatty to return all their belongings including the book of Venitas and Amelia. Fatty calmly replies that Amelia cannot be allowed to live as she got possessed and tried to attack humans. He continues that she will be killed by them to make sure that doesn't happen. No the incel simp starts crying about how she is innocent while Van simply sits down and claims that he has already cured her with the book. The fatty takes out the book from his ass and claims that this book is not magical at all, while Van claims that fatty doesn't have the brain cells to know how to use it. This bald bastard then tells Van that they will torture him till he tells them his true intentions, and he claims that he just wants to save the vampires. This makes them angry and they start arguing with each other, which triggers No's post-traumatic down syndrome and he kicks the desk away in anger before grabbing the book from Fatty's fat paws. He tells them that all the possessed vampires that are recently seen are due to someone who is cursing them, and promises to find and bring that cursed person in front of them, and Van will deal with him with his book. Fatty looks at him, and claims that they have one day to deal with this issue otherwise they will kill Amelia. Both of them get out of the room while No throws the book at Van's ugly face, telling him that they need to find the culprit no matter what. Van starts laughing at this simp, claiming that he must be a Discord mod during his free time asking for feet pics. After coming out of the hotel, they end up meeting with Dan, who is Van's informer, and tells them that he has information on the killer who recently killed nine people. Van begs him for the information and pays him after which he tells both Van and No to follow the bat. The bat takes off, and immediately No grabs Van and starts jumping on buildings with his vampire abilities. He starts running on top of building while Van tells him that a couple of months ago, this vampire emerged from the shadows and ended up killing nine humans. Van was pursuing him only but decided to help Amelia on the way in order to get a one-night stand. Suddenly, they hear some commotion and spot a very deranged-looking vampire trying to kill a human. Van immediately tells No that this is their target, and they must stop them. Without a second thought No throws Van like a ragdoll directly at the vampire, hitting and distracting him. No immediately jumps and pins him to the ground, while Van emerges from the rubble and uses his magical Kamasutra to do some weird magic on him which immediately turns him back to a normal vampire for a while, and knocks him out. Van tells No that they should take the killer to the fat ass, but before they could even move, two figures emerge from the darkness, who ask Van whether he is the one with the magic Kamasutra. The two figures turn out to be a lowly named Luca, and a total milf called Jen. Van immediately calls dibs on the milf, and asks what the hell do they want from him. Luca explains that both of them are vampires who are investigating these crimes and want to destroy the Book of Vanitas. Van makes fun of the lowly by calling her a bite-sized midget, which pisses the milf off, scaring both No and Van. The lowly continues by claiming that they believe it is Van with his magic Kamasutra, who is cursing all these vampires to become possessed, and they want to destroy the book so that he can never do that again. Van calls her stupid for thinking that, and explains that he is a doctor who is here to help the cursed vampires, while No tells them that they need to get this cursed vampire to the fat dipshit urgently. This really pisses the lowly off who claims that even she needs to destroy the book urgently as her stepbrother got cursed while she was stuck in a washing machine. Van tells her that he can heal him, but this pisses Jen off, and before he could react she comes in with a massive swing of her suitcase. Thankfully, No comes in clutch and grabs Van out of the way, saving his life, while he uses his tripping wire to take the hood off Jen. She turns out to be a total hottie, 
and Van calls Dibs again, while Loli asks Vanitas to hand over the book once again, but he denies. This pisses the crap out of Jen, who opens her briefcase to reveal a red weapon, which scares the living daylights out of Van who pisses his pants and tells No to run. No is very confused and thinks they should fight back, but Van explains that the weapon she has is a holy weapon that belonged to the vampire, who during the Great War killed 1,000 vampires alone after siding with humanity. He claims that Jen must be that vampire and there is no way they can match her. She ends up catching up to them and bangs her fist on the ground, creating a shockwave which throws Van up, and she tries to finish the job, but No the MVP comes in clutch once more and grabs her arm. This doesn't really matter though as she easily slams him before becoming Iron Man and charging a beam from her gauntlet, which forces No to kick Van away to safety while he ends up taking the entire attack head on. By the time the smoke clears they have already disappeared and were hiding in a factory while No tends to his injured arm. Van tells him that the lowly is not entirely wrong as the Book of Venitas can be used to curse a vampire, but No tells him that it doesn't matter as he has seen Van save people with this book. Van starts laughing at that but No immediately shoves his hand down his throat, telling him to shut up before they get discovered by the hottie. Van tells him not to worry as he has one way by which they could score her. He comes out of the factory alone when Jen tries to burn everything down. He stands in front of her and starts taunting her for working with a lowly, and tells her that the FBI are watching her. She tells him to shut the hell up and hand the book over to her, but Van is the top G and drops the book before telling her that he uses his left hand to milk his snake at night every single day which made it really powerful. Jen gets scared and backs off a bit, while he takes the gloves out of his hand, but it turns out to be a distraction as the possessed vampire re-emerges behind her and gives her a love bite on her shoulder, wounding her. This gives Van the opportunity to use his book and casts a lightning spell which paralyzes her as well. He then tells her to shut up and watch while he turns his attention towards the possessed vampire wolf. He figures out that this monster is basically an incel who got fed up with his bitchless life, so he got possessed by the spirit of a reddit mod and now he roams the night looking for females to harass. The monster turns his attention towards Van, but he simply opens his Kamasutra and uses a spell which utterly demolishes the discord mod spirit inside him, and he returns back to his normal vampire form, completely knocked out. Jen is shocked to see all this, as she had no idea Van could do this. Suddenly he realizes that he needed to take this and sell back to the fatty and show him how he can use the book. But thankfully, fatty's two underlings were there to witness this and promise to tell the ugly bastard about Van's powers. Everything seems to be going well, when Jen stands up once again, shocking Van because the spell should have paralyzed her. This scares him so he calls for No, who comes out of the darkness holding on to Loli as if she is a gym bag. Jen immediately gets worried for the brat, when Van walks up to her and threatens to dox her. No stands there unable to hear what he is saying, but remembers how he told him to find Luca using his lowly sniffing nose and bring her in front of Jen. The plan works, as Jen folds faster than a pack of cards, and starts pleading not to harm Luca. Van immediately takes advantage of this, and shoots his shot like the stalker near the corner of your street. He touches her face and uses his magic to deplete her strength even more and surprises everyone by kissing her on the lips, proving once and for all that consent is just a myth. Jen is beyond shocked while this incel licks her fingers and claims to be in love with her. This really pisses Luca the lowly off as she believes in true gender equality, and is angry at Van as he never asked her pronouns. Van dodges her magic attack, while Jen uses this to escape and grabs Luca on the way before climbing on top of a building. She tells Van that she will come again to take vengeance, and Van seems happy about it which creeps her out and she vanishes. The next morning they go to the fatty's hotel, where thankfully they let Amelia go, but this ugly bastard tells them that Amelia will have to stay in the hotel and work as a maid. He then hits the desk for absolutely no reason and screams at Van that he will even have to stay under his supervision and heal any vampire that they bring in. Van smiles like a molester and agrees to this arrangement as this way he doesn't need to roam around and find patients as they will be brought to him. Fatty then tells him that their room is ready, which confuses No as he fights with the fatty claiming that he is not progressive enough to sleep with a guy, but the bald bastard tells him to say no homo and get it over with. Van then sits down and starts asking Amelia whether she saw a ghost right before she got possessed, but this woman doesn't even remember that and definitely belongs in the kitchen because of her IQ. She keeps thinking but fails, when suddenly the ugly bastard tells No that maybe he should figure out her memories. This surprises them all, but the fatty claims that he received a letter from No's teacher, who told him everything, 
Apparently, No belongs to the clan of a very strong vampire who had the ability of reading the memories of anyone by drinking their blood. But slowly they ended up dying, and No is the only one in his clan alive. Amelia looks at him and asks whether he could help her regain her memories, and No the big simp obviously jumps at the opportunity to touch a woman. He sits down and licks her hand like a freak before taking a bite and starts drinking the blood. He dives down into her memories and starts seeing things that happened in the airship, but he keeps looking and spots a shining light. Once inside he watches Amelia surrounded by some heavy fog, when suddenly something grabs her from behind. When she turns around she sees a weird freak circus where weird things are going by her. She seems completely confused when she hears a noise and turns around to see a ghost. This freaks her out and she starts running away from it and reaches a lamp post. Breathing hard, she looks up, only to be horrified by the ghost again, who comes directly in front of her and bites her head off. This suddenly snaps No back to reality as he starts breathing hard and tells Van that he saw the ghost. Than was thinking about it when suddenly the doors swing open and a woman barges in, calling herself Domi and claiming that No is her bitch. No immediately refutes, saying that he is not her bitch, but the woman walks up to Fatty and tells him that she needs to borrow No before putting a collar on him, actually making him a bitch. She takes him to a shop, telling him that she needs to attend a dance and he needs to be her partner. They go through a secret passageway leading to the portal which connects the human and the vampire world. Just as they were about to go through, suddenly Van rushes in behind them and jumps through the portal as well. Thankfully No grabs him and starts screaming that humans are not supposed to be in this world, but Van tells him to calm his tits as he has been here multiple times. Domi seems to be in a hurry and tells No to move on and looks at Van before saying that he is a very peculiar human. They walk outside only to see a huge beautiful vampire city with bats flying around the red sky. They walk for a little while and finally reach Domi's trailer where she takes No inside while Van sits outside, waiting for them. She immediately starts stripteasing him but No is a buzzkill and starts apologizing for bringing Van with him. Domi then walks over to him and unchains him, before taking out her dress just a little and allowing No to suck her blood. Van stays outside like a good wingman, happy that his buddy finally got to hit that ass. A little while later they get dressed and enter the ballroom which is filled with people wearing weird orgy masks dancing all around the huge room. No starts getting uncomfortable with so many jokers around, while Van tries his luck with the kids, but No immediately carries him away as the FBI are still watching them. After that they follow Domi around, when suddenly No ends up getting distracted by a bunch of robots and follows them, leaving Domi and Van alone. He follows the robots and starts asking them about when AI will take over the world. But even the robots tell him to fuck off and leave. While backing off, No ends up running into none other than Loli Luca and her two FBI agents. Both of them are shocked to see each other, and Luca asks whether he is following her like a creep, but No immediately denies it. The agents start asking whether this guy is troubling Luca, but she immediately tells them that No is her friend and they need to talk. She takes No away while Domi decides to take advantage of No's absence and takes Van inside a room and closes the door. Van thinks happily that he will tap that ass now, but Domi ends up showing him what a dominatrix is and ties him to the wall before throwing knives at his head. Van still thinks that this is some weird kink, but Domi walks up to him and slashes him across the face, asking whether he is trying to take advantage of No. She keeps throwing knives at him, asking why a human like him trying to help vampires. Finally he breaks free of the chains, and tells her that he will prove right now that he has the real book of Vanitas. After saying that he jumps off the balcony and lands on the chandelier before shouting at all the vampires to look at him. He then announces that his name is Van and that he has the book of Vanitas that everyone is scared of. Many vampires look weirded out by this in cell, but he removes his sleeves to show a blue mark on his arm, proving to everyone that he is the real deal indeed. The vampires immediately get worried, and some of them get ready to kill him, but Vanitas immediately gets out his magic Kamasutra and defends himself. He then shouts at everyone that even though he can destroy and curse any vampire in this room, he won't do that. Instead he is a doctor who wants to heal them and asks if anyone has any curses. His speech doesn't go as planned and suddenly the leader of these vampires named Veronica walks out, and immediately decides to kill Van. Thankfully for him, Jen comes in clutch and saves him by destroying the chandelier and carrying him away to the roof. Van is completely smitten by her, but she drops him on his ass, telling him to piss off. Suddenly she starts acting weird while a loud whistling noise is heard in the ballroom. No has no idea what's happening when suddenly a bunch of cursed vampires emerge and start attacking everyone. No runs off with Luca and they finally find the two FBI agents, 
who run towards Luca, but end up getting slaughtered by two men. One of them is Wolverine himself who attacks Luca, but no blocks the attack and throws him away. The other midget immediate attacks, but no sidesteps and shatters his sword completely, and slams him into the wall. Wolverine decides to use his relentless combo attacks, but No is too overpowered and dodges all of them before kicking him away. No asks who the hell they are, when suddenly a ghost emerges from Wolverine and claims that they are Charlatan, who will destroy all the vampires. Meanwhile, Van realizes that Jen is very weak and offers to let her drink his blood. She tells him that he might die because of this, but this incel doesn't care to die as long as a beautiful girl is sucking him. She realizes that she needs the strength to save Luca, so she pounces on Van and starts sucking his blood, getting ready to fight the cursed vampires. On the other hand, No is offended that this good-for-nothing ghost gang put him down in front of the lowly he is trying to win by claiming that they could destroy him. He dashes towards Wolverine and kicks him like he is Ronaldo. As soon as Wolverine crashes into the wall, the idiot then tries to punch the ghost but obviously his hand passes through. The ghost goes all homo while enjoying the fist inside it and tells him that it was inside Louis when it first saw No and got interested. Hearing Louis name triggers his PTSD and he remembers how his teacher had introduced him to his grandchildren Louis and Domi. Being a simp even back then he had started hitting on Domi. This had caused her brother to get all protective and start mocking No about how stupid he was. No had asked him to shut his trap and stop ruining his chances with the girl. It was not long before the bitch started crying though because he realized that Louis was not exactly wrong. Out of pity both of them ended up getting into bed with No that night though so in the end works out well for him I guess. They became really close friends over the next few years and the siblings moved in permanently to live with him. One day Louis found out that he was a curse bearer because his grandfather forgot to lock his study which caused him to spiral into depression. While he kept the existence of the curse a secret, one of their friends Mina also turned out to be a curse bearer. Being the simp that he was, No decided to save her from execution and help her flee the village. On the way Mina suddenly collapsed into an orgasm which made No stiffen up. Just then she lifted her head and he noticed her red eyes and realized that she had turned into a crazy vampire. She bit onto one of the villagers and then pounced onto No. The dumb bitch stayed where he was waiting for some action but Louis dashed onto the scene and tore the crazy bitch apart before she could cause any harm. This attack activated Louis curse however and he started thirsting for blood. He rushed to attack Domi but No being the alpha male held onto him to protect his waifu. He calmed Louis down for a bit but the crazy bitch ended up biting him nonetheless. He only made it out of there because the teacher suddenly appeared and chopped Louis head off because he could suck No out completely. Back in the present he remembers how he had never had any action since then and collapses because of the sadness. The ghost promises to take away his loneliness and is about to kiss No but Van appears and pushes the ghost away. Van warns No that he should not let red flags pop his cherry and pulls out his magical Kamasutra. Meanwhile Wolverine runs towards Luca to grab hold of her but Jen bashes the wall and enters the room to knock them out. The charlatan gang realizes that this trio is not worth wasting their time on and calls out to their vampire army. Jen knocks the entire army with one swing of her Hulkbuster arm which makes the monsters decide to retreat for now. Before leaving the ghost promises No that it will find him and beat his meat someday. As Jen and Luca chase down the monsters No is sulking about not getting action even after being so close to it. Just then Domi enters the room and No tries to release himself on her which gets him bitch slapped. Van walks up to them and reminds them that there are still crazy vampires to cure and Domi immediately grabs the opportunity to get away from the incel. She pulls out her sword and agrees to support Van before immediately running out into the hall. No follows them and as soon as they spot the first patient he grabs onto Van and jumps down the balcony to the location. Van casts his Kamasutra magic and gives the cursed girl an orgasm so big that she collapses onto the floor. As the boys stand there enjoying the sight Domi asks them to get their ass moving because she found another patient inside. They rush to the scene and hear loud moans from inside a bedroom. When they enter they see a vampire going at it with another girl. Van calls dibs on the scissoring action and pushes No away before pulling out his book. This pisses No off and just as the vampire reaches salvation he grabs onto the doctor's collar. Their bromance is interrupted by a crazy dominatrix appearing at the door. She conjures icicles from the floor to attack them but they jump out of the way just in time. As they run out into the hall they see Domi tied up. No's happiness at seeing so many of his kinks in one place does not last long as the dominatrix follows them out and shoots icicles at them nonstop. 
One of them ends up hitting Van's foot and starts freezing him in place. Just as he is about to turn into an ice statue her master shows up and taps her ass for misusing her powers. She tells the Lord about the possibility that Van's Kamasutra is cursing the vampires which pisses him off and he himself sets out to knock Van off. No steps up to save his wingman and asks the Lord to back off. Just then Luca enters and they realize that the Lord is her uncle Ruth. After learning that they are all friends, Ruth melts off the ice and agrees to take the boys under his wing and train them. Before the conversation can move ahead No who is now completely exhausted thanks to the joke of a stamina that he has, faints. He opens his eyes in a fancy ass room after some time and immediately goes to look for his homie. Van's ego gets hurt at the fact that No felt the need to protect him and check on him. He pulls out a knife to slash No's throat but he just grabs onto his wrist. No says no homo and happy that he is okay, promises to be with Van at all times. Van and No go to meet Ruth in his office where he tells them that he found out that the charlatan are most probably after Luca. He tells them that Luca is a close advisor to the queen and taking her out would immensely help countless nobles carry out their corrupt plans. Van immediately asks him to take them to the queen as he believes that she is the one giving rise to curse bearers. He starts bad-mouthing the queen to provoke Ruth and as a result gets kicked out of the castle with no along with a threat. They head back to the ugly fatty and report to him about the recent happenings. While the fatty is pissed at him, Van simply ignores him as he is busy telling no about how vampires are wired to go blind with rage if the queen is insulted. He adds that Luca was eerily calm during the incident though which raised his red flags. Later that day Van's informant Dan bring in more info to sell to the doctor. They tell him that the night before they saw a curse bearer being kidnapped in front of their eyes and got beat up good when they tried to stop it. They hand him a button that they tore off from the kidnapper's coat during the fight. Van immediately recognizes the symbol as that of the anti-vampire unit of the church. That night Van cannot sleep and sneaks out to investigate the kidnappings. No, being a bitch obsessed with him, notices this and joins him right away. Van is picking the lock of the church when two priests hear the noise and come out to check. The boys tie them up and strip them but since they do not have a lot of time to satisfy their kinks, just put their clothes on as a disguise. Van opens a doorway to the underground tunnels and tells No that the anti-vampire unit's HQ has been the dungeons since the war. As they explore the dungeons, they run into a captain of the unit. They pretend to be innocent lost priests, and he offers to take them back where they came from although he has his doubts about them. After walking for a while the crafty guard tricks Van and locks him up in a cellar. Without wasting time he then throws an anti-vampire flash grenade at No which messes his vision up and reveals his identity as a vampire. The captain is overcome with bloodthirst to slay his mortal enemy, and injects himself with steroids to be able to destroy No completely. Despite having zero vision and feeling sick, No stands up to face the guard. Van tries to convince him to run and seeing his concern makes No moan his name. As soon as the captain hears his name and recognizes him as the person that they are looking for to save him from the vampires, Van is offended that the captain considers him nothing more than No's bitch and scratches his face. As the captain continues trying to save Van, No regains his vision and prepares to take him down. The captain notices this and dashes towards No with his double-edged spear with Godspeed. Now barely manages to dodge him but the captain continues slashing at him without giving him any time to breathe. He then jumps up in the air and strikes down at the vampire but ends up hitting ground as No jumps backwards. Just as he stands back up the captain takes out his throwing knives and slashes at No's arms with a powerful throw. He then morphs his spear into a whip and strikes at No with it. No grabs onto it to stop it but the priest then electrocutes him by activating the stored electricity in the whip. As No falls to his knees, he dashes at him to whip him up but Van manages to escape his cellar and steps in. This catches the captain off guard and No takes the chance to grab onto his hand and throw him into the wall. As the dust settles the captain notices that the boys have escaped. Just then two of his comrades step in and he tells them what had happened. The trio sets out hunting down the intruders. Van and No are hiding in a corridor deep within the dungeon where Van admits that he came here looking for someone. He tells him that his target's name is Morau whose obsession with vampire research caused him to go mad. This eventually got him expelled from the church but the button points to an abductor who was a being enhanced by Morau's experiments. Meanwhile the captain puts out a paw announcement about the intruders. As he steps out with his companion to look for them himself, he finds his men lying unconscious on the floor. Their robot guards had all turned against their master making the AI uprising fear very real. On the other hand Van and No are exploring the dungeon further as No wonders how Van knows the way so well. Dan senses his confusion and tells him that after his family was slain, the anti-vampire unit saved him. 
They were training him as a new recruit but Mora started getting interested in him. He refuses to share anything beyond this which pisses no off, and the dumb bitch starts screaming at Van. This brings in a bunch of guards to them but as soon as they throw a flash bomb Van uses his magic to escape and seal the door behind them. No then comes up with a plan and the boys step out in the open pretending that Van is No's hostage. The captains are immediately convinced by their acting and one of them charges at No. The vampire throws his friend into the air to get him out of the way of his fight and jumps up just as the guard slashes down with his axe. He then uses his back to leverage himself to jump higher and launches down a kick to another captain's head. Once the captain is unable to move he starts trying to reason with him because he finds him too cute to fight with. Eventually he tells him that Murrow is still alive and his experiments are causing vampires to go crazy. This grabs the captain's attention and he immediately offers to join them in defeating the crazy scientist. Van leads them to Murrow's bunker and as soon as they open the door they are greeted by confetti. Murrow reveals that Van was one of his experiments and is happy to see him after such a long time. Van goes ahead to greet him and introduces the others as his supporters who want to help him with his experiments. Listening to this makes him go insanely happy as he has always been alone in his mission and deprived of any love. He takes them in for tea and tells them that he is researching vampires because he wants to be one someday. He adds that one day vampires broke into his lab and took several of his specimen away including Van who was the most extraordinary out of them. This was a major setback for him but now that Van is back to help him, he believes that things will be good again. He then goes on to tell them that there is an important person who supports his research and thus he is able to survive in the lair of the very anti-vampire unit that drove him out. When they ask him the name of this person he simply switches the topic to how he loves to collect balls of vampires. He then admits that he is fascinated by Vans and just as the crazy scientist is about to pull them out, No grabs his hand. Van asks him to stop interrupting but No is so pissed about Murrow wanting to touch Van's balls that he slams him onto the table. Murrow's bodyguards rush to attack him but Captain Ron goes all Dr. Octopus and knocks them out with his tentacles. As No holds onto the doctor, Van draws a knife on him and threatens him to tell the name of the person. But before they could get him to confess a monster jumps down onto the scene and kicks Van away. As he grabs onto Murrow and prepares to escape No recognizes him as the spider monster from the party. They jump onto the balcony and get into the lift, but Van refuses to give up. He pulls out his magical Kamasutra, but just as he is about to attack Murrow triggers his PTSD with memories of his ex. As No tries to make him get his bitch act together a shadow monster jumps into the room out of nowhere and starts causing chaos. It starts eating out some of Ron's comrades, and to save them the captain strikes at the monster's mouth with his lance. When it has no effect Van tries to get everyone to listen to a plan he has, but he is cut off as the monster shoves him away and knocks him out by crashing him into the wall. He is woken up by the sound of no begging and remembers that there is no time to think about his fantasies. He tells No to get Ron and his fighters out of the room as he deals with the curse bearer inside the monster. No then reveals that he wants to be eaten out by the monster and the idea makes Van get excited as well. He grabs onto his Kama Sutra and runs towards the beast to give it the time of its life. Ron and his army slash onto the beast's limbs, and as it falls to the ground No and Van jump into its mouth. They finally see the curse bearer that is acting as the core of the beast just as they get wrapped up in darkness. Van immediately uses his Kamasutra magic which turns the beast into a rock and breaks him into pieces. The boys fall out of its belly and onto the ground with a young vampire in their arms. Just as they are celebrating the possibility of a third person joining their nighttime adventures the ceiling of the lab starts to crash. Everyone runs out as soon as possible and as far as possible before they stop to catch their breath at a safe place. After they reel from the shock of the lab self-destructing, Ron asks No and Van to get out as the anti-vampire lair is not safe for them. He assures them that he will take care of their task to report these incidents to Fatty and pulls them into a tight hug. Just as No and Van say no homo and run away a sexy priest called Oli walks in. He asks the squad about the commotion but Ron ignores him and starts hitting on him which gets the captain bitch slapped. However this does not phase the captain 
and he keeps talking about how he almost became part of a three-way. Meanwhile, No and Van escape the dungeons and end up on a riverside in the middle of the city. They are so exhausted that they sit down to rest right away. In some dark corner of the city Spidey tells Ruth about what happened and tells him that the root of their problems is No. The next day Amelia walks into the boy's room and hands him an invitation from Jen that had arrived for him. He immediately starts dressing up which seems sus to No and he questions where he is going. He refuses to tell him and simply heads out to meet Jen for the date. She starts pretending to be completely rizzed by him because Domi had told her that Van only loved people who did not love him back. But instead of getting him off her back like she wanted he seems to have gained even more interest in her. As they walk through the town Domi sneakily follows them around to see if the plan succeeded. She sees them walking hand in hand and cozying up in public and is not surprised at how easily Jen was won over. She hates herself for setting up this date and killing her own chances to bone with the Gigachad. Van takes Jen to explore Paris and feeds her stuffed rolls in a park which makes her want to actually smash him. Meanwhile No is woken up by Ruth suddenly appearing in the room and is taken out to a cafe by the Lord. The fact that Ruth booked an entire cafe for the date makes No wet as hell but the Lord then keeps talking about Van. No tries to bring his focus back on him by telling him that he reminds him of his master. Ruth reveals that he was indeed a teacher in the past and was loved by his students. The only thing keeping him in check was the FBI, and before his students were old enough, they were all killed. He adds that he would love to have students like No, as it would fill his days with pleasure. Ruth then goes full force into winning him over by telling him that Van is only taking advantage of him. He asks No if his type is humans or vampires to which he replies that he likes them both. Ruth then declares that No has failed the test and he suddenly starts struggling with intense pain. Ruth grabs onto him and bites him in the neck while gagging him with his massive hand to control his moans. Back at the park the date is interrupted by a boy tripping over while playing. He starts bleeding which makes Jen lose control and reveals her vampire identity in public. This causes chaos in the park, but before she can attack anyone Van grabs onto her and makes her bite his hand. Suddenly they are covered by a smokescreen by Domi and the informant who had just joined her in her spying. They waste no time in escaping the scene and head over to Jen's house, where she then starts to suck him out. Van asks her bluntly if she is a curse bearer who has been forbidden to talk about it by someone. She simply ignores him and takes off his tie before going on to give him the time of his life. She suddenly starts crying and makes him promise to kill her if she ever caused any harm to Luca. Meanwhile at the cafe some kind of darkness starts taking over No who collapses to his knees. Ruth asks him to become his slave and hypnotizes him into agreeing. Once the ritual is complete Ruth makes No his bitch by tying a collar around his neck and he suddenly loses consciousness. Spidey who was hiding at the cafe comes out and asks his master why he did not kill No as originally planned. He reveals that he decided to use him as a pawn instead and find out his teacher's grand plans. Later that night after Jen calms down Van walks her back home to seal his deal. She tells him what her original plan was and he reveals that he knew. He expresses his shock at the fact that Luca let her go on the date to which she replies that she is with her older brother. She tells him that Ruth gave her the permission to go on the date which immediately makes warning bells go off in his head. He rushes to their room, but as soon as he enters he finds someone who seems like no sleeping there. The vampire wakes up and asks him the reason he looks so worried, but he just asks him to shut his trap. Back in the street, Jen is still waiting for Van to come back when Ruth approaches her. He tells her that he heard reports of a vampire causing chaos in the park and hence rushed to check in. She begs him to forgive her as she did take consent before biting the human that she did. He agrees and wraps his coat around her before asking her to come home with him. In the church, Oli finds Ron sitting in the library reading up about the history between humans and vampires. When Oli asks him the reason for doing this now after all this time, Ron tells him that he expects to find something that he completely missed before because of the new broad perspective that he has gained. One of his army men George asks Oli to not worry because the bitch be loyal, but Oli finds it difficult to completely trust him, 
and starts trying to convince him that there is no hope for friendship between vampires and humans. He reminds him how in the worst case scenario his family could be demolished by the beasts. However Ron is unfazed and instead threatens Oli to shut his ass up as he only does what he wants to. In another part of town Dan jumps into Van's room through the window and informs him that the Beast of Jev has risen. Seeing how clueless No is he tells him that it is a huge wolf with sharp claws and red fur. In the past, it had raided the village of Jev and had massacred the residents mercilessly. Dan adds that the beast is believed to be nothing more than a curse-bearing vampire. While they are not sure if it is the same beast, five bodies have already turned up this month, and all of them were killed in different ways just like in the past. More importantly, there are eyewitness accounts. Van immediately gets up to go outside to think alone, but before leaving asks No about his plan. However he is busy thinking about how good Van smells and wanting to suck him out and cannot focus on the conversation. He decides to convince Van to let No have his blood and starts buttering him up. Van cuts him off in the middle and tells him to never ask him permission to suck his blood if he wants to live. No is surprised at how mean Van is being, but the doctor just ignores him and leaves. No lies down and is crying about how he messed up the only chance he had to suck on Van. The next day when Van comes home to get ready for the investigation No joins him too. As they are walking Van can no longer take the awkwardness and confronts No about it. He apologizes for the day before and Van allows him to lick him off when he is injured. A happy No then follows Van to the station and they get on a train to Jev. While he is excited to get on a train for the first time, he cannot sleep at all on the train because he is sure that Van will abandon him. They eventually reach their destination where they find out that Dan and his team joined in too with the hopes that they find some juicy gossip to sell. They immediately take a wagon to head towards their inn. They plan to dump their stuff in the inn and immediately go hunt for the beast. Later that day, as the party is walking through the forest of the beast van, informs them that a witch too is said to live here. This makes them wonder if there is some connection between the witch and the beast. As the party is discussing this further No spots some nuts nearby that he would like to eat. He slips away from the party and ends up getting lost eventually. As soon as the party notices that he is missing they set out to look for him and end up in a snowy area. They hear someone coming and immediately hide behind bushes. A bunch of soldiers who are out for the beast hunt on the king's orders step out. The gang does not have much time to think about it however as soon the gigantic beast arrives at the scene. The soldiers pull out their guns on it, but their bullets have no effect on the giant wolf. It swipes the soldiers away with its paw and knocks them out. This scares the party and they start to run away, but the beast is quicker and it manages to knock Van down. It rushes towards the doctor with its red glowing eyes, but Jen shows up out of nowhere and blasts the beast away with her gauntlet. Meanwhile No runs into a badass murdering a bunch of people. As soon as the killer notices No she strikes at him, but No manages to jump out of the way and onto a tree. Upon a closer look the killer recognizes him as someone he saw on the Paris station and introduces himself as a Sto. He reveals that he is from the anti-vampire squad Chaz and he killed these men because they were trying to get their hands on him. He soon realizes that No is a vampire and dashes towards him to slice him up like a piece of ham. When No dodges he keeps attacking him relentlessly to provoke him to fight. No notices how he enjoys bloodshed unlike Ron and the other Chaz which scares the shit out of him. Just then the crazy bitch starts stabbing the dead bodies to make sure that they have been killed and to stop him No rushes towards him. Esto strikes him with his huge ass sword and ends up slashing his chest and knocking him to the ground. Just as he is about to stab him with his spear, the beast emerges out of the forest mid-fight with Jen. It falls to the ground and the force knocks away No and Esto. As the informants run to know to check on him Van tries to convince Jen to not kill the beast right away. However she is hell-bent on getting revenge for years ago and goes all Iron Man on it. The Stowe who is watching this from afar is sure that she is the Hellfire Witch and rushes to get a glimpse of the epic deathmatch. In the background as explosions play out Van tries to provoke a Stowe to fight him. This makes sure that No is free to go stop Jen so that Van can then save the curse bearer. On the other hand Jen is running around the beast dodging its attacks and eventually manages to scratch its neck. 
she launches a blast from her gauntlet to land the finishing blow, but the force throws her away. Just then No appears and reminds her of so many curse bearers that have been saved to motivate her to stop the fight. She just says that it is her duty to execute curse bearer and climbs onto his shoulders, wrapping her legs around his neck. She threatens to kill him if he tried to interfere in the fight again. Meanwhile, Van is continuously provoking a stow as the knight keeps trying to slash at him. All of this chaos is being watched by the ghost leader, and he decides to step in and enjoy it firsthand. It wraps the world up in weird-ass wallpaper and comes up to talk to No. He sends out hallucinations that trigger the other's PTSD to get some privacy with his Edward Cullen. This leads to a Stowe getting even crazier and he walks up to Jen to kill her. Just as he is about to slice her throat with his knife Van jumps in and lands a cut on his arm instead. He then kicks the knight away and pulls out his magical Kama Sutra to put an end to this craziness. However, before he could complete the spell, the book is knocked out of his hand by a flying knife. The book falls to the ground and the resulting explosion knocks everyone out and eats up the hallucinatory world. As things calm down, the curse bearer inside the wolf, Chloe is freed and a man walks up to her to take her home. A while later Jen spots Van and noticing that he is poisoned offers to suck it out. She carries him to a cottage nearby and lights up the fireplace to keep him warm. She takes off his clothes which are damp from the snow and looking at her doing the same causes him to faint out of happiness. She then wraps a blanket around them as they sit in front of the fire to dry down and warm up. Once they cozy up a bit she tells him that her parents were Ruth's students and as a result had to travel around a lot. Once when they were going on an adventure they left her in the care of the Lord of Jev at his castle. Chloe was a vampire that was kept hidden there and taught her a lot of things. She had become a big sister to Chloe and being asked to slay her hurt her a lot. She was supposed to follow orders without question and that is the only reason she ended up fighting her. She suddenly notices that Van is feverish and goes to bring him water. He suddenly breaks down as he realizes that Jen and him are technically enemies since he wants to try his best to save the beast. This pisses him off but Jen calms him down with a kiss and asks him to rest for now. The next morning when she wakes up she notices that Van is gone. She is worried that he abandoned her but just then she hears voices from outside. She peeks out and sees Van talking to one of the informants. Seeing him strong enough to walk around makes her happy which suddenly reminds her of the incidents last night. She is embarrassed by her unexpected dom behavior and beats herself up for falling for such an arrogant and useless man. She walks out of the cottage to embarrass him by reminding him how much of a bottom he was the last night and gain the upper hand. As soon as she steps up to greet him she notices that he is back to normal and she is instead the one who is tongue-tied. The informant John notices this awkwardness and starts poking around his nose in their business trying to get some gossip. They are interrupted by Dan who had been looking for them since the battle yesterday. He pounces onto John and tackles him to the ground to cuddle with him. As No is the only one who is not there Van wonders where he has run off to. Dan hears this and informs him that he was taken away by the witch along with Van's Kamasutra. He tried to follow them but they noticed him and he had to thus run away before he could learn much. As the gang sets out to go after them, Van pulls out his dagger on Dan and John to everyone's surprise. Van asks them to tell him everything that they have been hiding from him about the beast as he had paid him the full price. When Dan agrees to blurt it all out on the way, Van asks Jen to lead them to Chloe's place as he is sure that she is the witch. Meanwhile Asto has taken shelter in a cave in the forest where one of his men finds him. Asto immediately asks him to follow him to the witch's castle to complete their task. In the castle, No wakes up to Chloe sucking on him and immediately pushes her away to avoid any trouble from the FBI. She does not give a flying frick though and pushes him back down because her satisfaction is more important. Before she can go back to sucking him her butler Jean enters the room and drags her away from No. He vows to strangle No to death for stealing his girl from him and his jealousy melts Chloe down like an ice cream at room temperature. Jean is satisfied with himself and does the job that he was actually here to do. He hands No his cat that he found wandering the mountains and his clothes which were so stinky that he had to wash them. He asks No to change and come down as soon as possible before carrying Chloe out of the room. No cannot help thinking about whether Van is okay but since he can do nothing at the moment he decides to hear out what the couple has to say. He finds them sitting at the dining table with robotic instruments playing creepy tunes for them. As Chloe asks him to join them the creepy shadow guy from earlier appears behind her. Seeing the ghost pisses No off and he asks it to get away from Chloe but she just asks him to sit and have his meal. He gets over his surprise at the fact that the ghost and Chloe seem like friends and asks her straight up if she is the beast. 
he asks her how she can bear to sit beside the very ghost that turned her into a curse-bearing vampire. She asks him to shut his trap because she is a woke woman with her own agency who chose for things to be this way. She made a wish and the price was to let the ghost take over her and turn her into a curse bearer. The ghost clarifies that with vampires as powerful as Chloe, forcing them is not an option. Thus it politely asks them if they want to let him stay in exchange for a wish. It then goes on to ask No if there is anything that he wishes for. No immediately remembers how the ghost had killed Louis and asks it if he had been offered the same deal. No loses it as soon as he thinks of Louis and tries to slap the ghost but his hand passes through. He then jumps onto the table and tries to grab hold of it but when he cannot he gets angrier and throws everything off the table. Chloe immediately climbs up and bitch slaps him into the wall for ruining her lunch. When he regains consciousness he finds himself in the kitchen where Jean is cooking something. He apologizes for what happened and asks him where Chloe is. Jean tells him that she is with the shadow and asks him to stay away but no cannot let a girl be alone with a dangerous monster. His heroic monologue is interrupted by his growling stomach though and Jean immediately sets up a meal for him on the condition that no help him with the cleaning. He takes a sip of the soup and immediately decides that he has found his match in Jean. He walks up to Jean and starts simping over the soup while thanking him for saving his life. Meanwhile in the forest Dan tells the others that Chloe's family were conducting research on the world formula even though the church strictly forbade it. The research eventually led to the development of a device that can alter the world formula called the Alteration Engine. That is what gave rise to the Beast of Jev and the reason both vampires and humans are obsessed with it is to study it further. Dan bluntly asks Dan who he works for and seeing no point in lying. He tells them that he takes orders from a lord named Francis. He wants to know whether the engine really exists and had tasked Dan with getting Van involved because of his reputation. If it does exist, Don is to find it and bring it to him. Back at the palace Jean and No are hitting it off and they end up on a castle tour. Jean shows No the family pictures of Chloe and tells him that each one of them was killed in the beast attack. Chloe has been alive for very long and has been watching over every generation of the family. He asks No if his people want to harm her but No clarifies that their only enemy is the shadow dude. He tells him about Van's powers and tells Jean about the possibility of getting Chloe exercised permanently from the ghost. He asks him about Chloe choosing to give in to the ghost and Jean immediately launches into his sob story. He tells No that she had been crying every day before the ghost arrived and he was completely helpless and could do nothing to make her feel better. When the ghost offered to make her stop and she agreed, he just stood by as at that point anything that took away her pain was okay with him. All he wanted was to be with her forever and make sure that she is taken care of. In another room the ghost questions Chloe's decision to leave Jean alone with No. She asks him not to worry and let it be as it is a rare opportunity for Jean to meet another person. She admits that she too is having a difficult time as she is a very jealous woman. To prove her point she starts telling him a story from when she was younger. She woke up one day to find out that she had become a vampire. Once the beast had made the world formula unstable it started having an effect on this world too, and that is what had caused it. Her father had asked her to not let anyone know that she is a vampire and vowed to make her human again. Her body stopped aging and thus she had to be kept hidden from the world to avoid suspicion. Everyone was told that she had fallen ill and died. At their castle deep in the mountains her father gathered renowned mages and alchemists to study the world formula. Even while taking his last breath all he wanted to do was make Chloe human again. As the generations passed by her father's wish turned into something else. The family became greedy with the immense power and figuring out the world formula and gaining the godly power that came with it became their wish. One day a traveler arrived at the castle and introduced himself as August to her. He was the first vampire that she had ever met and in the excitement started spilling all secrets to him. She told him that interacting with the world formula required a medium and that her family had chosen sound to be theirs. She showed him the notes and he seemed to believe that making the alteration engine is definitely possible. He claimed that it was their only shot at a brighter future for the world. Before her friendship with August she had never really thought about the world. The only world she knew was the castle and the mountains surrounding it. August educated her about it and told her that vampires were struggling against the church to survive in the outside world. Vampires were being hunted down and humans were being tortured over the smallest suspicions. When she asked him whose side he was on, August had told her that he belonged to neither. He told her that he liked vampires as much as he liked humans and hence wanted to end the war between them. She was jealous of how he could speak his mind but felt close to him as well. When he left, all she could do was keep waiting for him to return. A while later, Jen came to the castle and was placed under her care while her parents were away. One day she claimed to have spotted an amazing place from the window and ran into the woods to look for it. 
She asked Chloe to join her and while she was scared and hesitant at first she ran in behind her. She kept looking for Jen but she was nowhere to be found. All of a sudden the girl had jumped out of hiding and tackled her to the ground playfully. The beauty of the flowers and the forest had deeply touched Chloe and had brought tears to her eyes. It was the first time that she had ignored her father's orders to never go out and she did not regret it a bit. She saw the massive blue sky and the beauty of nature for the first time ever which had made it all worth it. The day was something that was extraordinarily new for her. Then one day Jen too was taken back by August to her parents and she did not hear from her since then. She was worried that something had happened to her but she had no way to go and check in on her. She could not abandon her family no matter what. One day August came back injured heavily. He asked her if the alteration engine was complete before falling to his knees in pain. He admitted that he was wrong in thinking that the church can be reasoned with and that he must set things right. To do that he needed her family's research and thus he begged her for it. When she refused to hand it over he grabbed her face and in a swift motion picked her up to bite her neck. She protested but he did not stop and ended up making her his slave. He made her swear to use her power and knowledge according to his command. However she broke free with her willpower and kicked him out of her castle as it was her very duty to protect the research from going out of her family. August felt hurt at the refusal and left without another word, never reaching out to her again. She lost the very first friend that she had ever had. After a while she received a letter from someone who claimed to be August's friend informing her that the war was over. The main reason for the peace was August and he had climbed the rank to become a member of the Senate. She realized that her friend had achieved what he had wanted the most and would never come back. She spent decades working on her research alone and wondering how Jen was doing. Once while she was procrastinating working on the engine and missing Jen especially too much the ghost had appeared and had offered to take her troubles away. It made her hallucinate and believe that she had killed Jen and to confirm her fears, she heard a bunch of travelers nearby talking about Jen's death. She ran from the creepy ghost but he succeeded in pressuring her to ask him for a wish. Chloe had ended up becoming a beast by her own choice for a reason and she would not give up until she had achieved all her goals. If you liked this video, you would love this idiot, who becomes the new demon lord and saves his school from destruction.